When kids are playing sports, the most common injuries that we see are concussions, which make up about 80% of all head injuries. And then we, we get to more dramatic injuries like skull fractures and bleeds in the brain. When you consider concussions, we see that most commonly in contact sports, so football, volleyball, even things like cheerleading, we see quite a few concussions there. When we consider the broad topic of head injuries, we could see that even in bicycling, horseback riding, even swimmers get concussions. So you see it pretty much across the board. Signs that a head injury occurred in general would be things like confusion, if they lost consciousness, if they're asking the same questions over and over again, if they complain of a headache, if they have nausea or vomiting. And signs that they could be maybe bleeding in their head would be more specifically the headache, the nausea, and the act of vomiting. If you suspect somebody is concussed, the best thing to do is have them pulled from the game or pulled from the practice and have them sit on the sideline and be evaluated. The primary treatment for a concussion is rest. So rest is best when it comes to concussions. So when we consider head injuries, we always think about how do we, how do we avoid these injuries. So there's two big ways to avoid them, right? One is protecting the individual, and the other is preventing the head injury from happening. So when you consider prevention, we look at things like rules changes, limiting the number of days we have contact and things like football. We look at educating coaches and people on the sideline, and if somebody looks like they got hit, pulling the student and having them evaluated, or pulling the athlete and having them evaluated. When we look at protective mechanisms, there are a variety of helmet rating systems. We want helmets that have been scored by Noxie and passed. When a child sustains a head injury, of course that's a big event in their lives and they're being pulled out of the game and you can understand coaches, families, and everybody else saying, get back in the game, it's just a head injury, it's not a big deal, it's just a concussion. The risk we run though is if the child gets hit again while they're on the playing field, they can get hit again and this poses two problems. The first is their brain could swell so much that then they die. That's called second impact syndrome, and that's the thing we're always worried about. But the other thing is, even if they sustain a second concussion on top of the first one, before the first one has recovered, they are at really high risk for now having a very prolonged course of recovery. So that means an even longer time spent off the, off the field and an even longer time spent out of the classroom. The primary job of the student athlete is student first, athlete second. So when we, in the healthcare profession, have a student athlete in front of us, our main goal is to get the person back into the classroom, tolerating full days of school, before we start entertaining having the patient be back on the field.